Good morning. This is Pete Burns with the Energy Conservatory. This morning's webinar will be on connection options for the DG700 digital pressure and flow gauge. Question comes up, why would I want to connect my DG700 to a computer? For years, many of us have been out there testing with, heck, magnihelic gauges, DG2s, DG3s, DG700s without ever connecting uh, to, a, to a laptop. Um, uh, the first and foremost reason would be that um, it would allow you to take uh, advantage of some of the, the testing software that uh, the conservatory has developed over the years. And we'll go through some of those softwares in a little bit. But some of those softwares offer um, a, um, the, um, the, the new ResNet tests. Uh, the new ResNet test standards are fully laid out in, uh, in the new version of Tektite. Um, uh, uh, software allows you to do fully automated testing. Uh, automated testing can really help with uh, consistency if you work with a, a large organization or uh, nonprofit or have uh, uh, employees. Um, um, getting everyone on the same page with automated testing really helps the consistency because it pretty much walks you through the um, through the test so there's no missteps and everything gets done properly uh, the test um, uh, the results are um, adjusted um, uh, there's a temperature correction that's that's done on the test so it's it's nice and consistent uh, the other thing is that the uh, automated tests allow you uh, to archive your tests so that all of your tests are saved on a hard drive and you can recall them at any point in time and uh, you can email them to your to either your um, your your individual homeowner your customers or uh, in some states that have adopted some of the new code language um, where there is a, a testing requirement for either uh, blower doors or duct blasting. Using the software, um, again, gives you a document that you can hand off to the, to the code official. Um, again, um, uh, the, the automated test can give you a nice, consistent test. Some of the softwares have different features that allow you to uh, print out different reports. Uh, one of the softwares allows you to calculate ventilation requirements according to ASHRAE 62210. Uh, again, um, the, the uh, automated software will do temperature corrections. There'll be baseline features. Uh, and then we've also got one software that allows you to uh, do data logging. Um, let's look at some of, um, some of those softwares. Uh, the, the one that most, uh, most folks are, are the most familiar with uh, is Tektite. Tektite 4.0 has been out for many, many years. Uh, Tektite uh, allows, has, has basically two test standards that you can test to. You can select the ResNet tests, and within the ResNet category, you can select either a ResNet one-point test, or a ResNet multi-point test, or a ResNet repeated single-point or one-point test. The other test that uh, experienced Tech Tight users are familiar with is the CGSB test. That's the Canadian General Standard Board test. That uh, is a, it's an eight-point uh, test that tests the building over uh, a range of pressures. Uh, again, some of the other features of of Tech Tight are that Tech Tight will generate ventilation requirements based on ASHRAE 62210. Uh, it also has a feature that will um, that will predict um, savings from air sealing measures, uh, but you've got there's some extra inputs that you can uh, that you'll have to enter. Uh, it'll calculate um, uh, natural air changes. Uh, so there's a whole variety of things. Tektite Tektite is is uh, by far has has the most uh, most features in it. Um, Tektite Express was developed uh, as kind of a um, a streamlined version of of Tektite. Uh, Tektite Express uh, will not calculate the, um, it doesn't have a feature for the ASHRAE ventilation requirements, uh, and it will not predict savings uh, for air sealing measures, but it will allow you to test to the, um, um, uh, the Canadian General Standard Board test, and it will also uh, test to uh, the ASTM E779 test standard. Uh, and there is a version, a special version, uh, that will allow you to um, test the European EN13829 test standard. That is the test standard that's used by uh, passive house testers. Uh, so again, uh, Express uh, is out there. Um, I didn't mention this, but all of these softwares are available uh, 
24-7 from our website. They're free downloads. doesn't cost you a cent. Uh, you can jump on the website at any point in time and, and download these and, and play with these. Um, the third uh, software that we have up on the website um, is, um, it's actually, right now, it's, it's TechLog2. Um, we've got a new version coming out probably in June, uh, a third version called TechLog3. Uh, tech log, uh, tech log two, and tech log three. We would consider that multi-fan testing software. Uh, you can um, record up to 32 pressure channels with tech log two and tech log three. It allows you to control uh, and data log uh, in multiple channels. So this comes into play for multi-fan testing and um, and anyone that, that wants to uh, do data logging. Uh, and some of the data logging um, uh, examples would be you could actually run a CAS test on a building where you could record the uh, the pressure in the combustion appliance zone with reference to uh, the outside or um, any other zone and you could you could data log um, what happens and create event markers and logs what happens to the pressure in the CAS when I turn on the clothes dryer or what happens to the pressure in the in the CAS when we turn on the a 300 CFM kitchen exhaust fan another example you could um, you could pressure map uh, zonal uh, you could do zonal diagnostics with uh, with tech log 3 so tech log 3 really is kind of our state-of-the-art software that has um, uh, infinite capacity I mean whatever you can dream up you could probably data log and record uh, with multiple DG 700s inputting um, so you could do a lot with tech log 3 uh, highly recommend downloading that and playing with it if that um, if you're interested in that um, here's just a, a graph shot uh, of, of a, a tech log 2 uh, I'm sorry tech log 2 tech log 3 uh, graph where you're seeing a, uh, an actual uh, you've got uh, I think we've got about four one two three four different colors we've got blue we got orange we got red we got brown pressure channels and um, we can see that this building has some uh, some baseline uh, pressure. Uh, looks like it's running about between uh, 10 and 20 pascals of negative pressure in a baseline period. And then uh, for this test, um, the uh, building was depressurized, um, uh, and we created periods of record at uh, minus 30, 35, minus 40, minus 45, all the way to minus 75. So this is really kind of a, an Army Corps uh, multi-fan um, um, uh, pressure test on, a, on an envelope where we were going to go to minus 75, and then at some point we would have turned the fans around and pressurized the envelope up to positive 75 pascals. So this is what it really looks like. This is really simplified. There's a, a lot more channels that you could bring on, but this just gives you a feel for what it looks like. Um, let's talk about the gauges and, and how the gauges have changed over the years because um, how you're going to connect your DG to a, a computer uh, really kind of depends on um, the, um, the vintage of your DG700. If your DG700 was purchased after November of 2009, you actually have a USB communication port built into your gauge and that really simplifies matters uh, and this is the side shot of that gauge if you have one of these DG 700s all um, all you're gonna need is the um, the 15 foot USB cable that comes with your DG 700 and what we'd recommend that you do prior to making that connection would be to jump on our web page and find the software page and what you're going to look for um, is a um, is this this driver you're going to want to download and install the USB port installer for our digital gauge and this this is really um, pretty important you if you don't download this driver um, you're going to open the software and you're going to get to the graphing screen on, on um, TechTite or TechTite Express and you're going to get an error message, data box not connected. You won't get the green bar saying um, 
um, d device connected. You, you just you won't get there. So you need to install this software first. And we've actually had some reports, folks that are working with uh, Windows 8. It seems like it's even more important with Windows 8 that you download and install this, the, uh, the driver first. We had an instance where a customer um, made the uh, actually connected up their their uh, their DG to their um, to their Windows 8 uh, device. I think it was a Surface Pro, and it kind of locked in, and we had a, we had we had trouble with it in that we had to go back in and actually remove the device. Uh, it it it, uh, it was an, it was an unknown device for the software because there was no driver, there was no connection made between this um, device and the software, and we had to go in and we had to remove the device install the driver and then make the connection so once again install the driver and then make your connection with your device open your uh, open the software and um, and you shouldn't have any trouble from that point forward for DG 700s that were purchased prior to November of 2009 uh, you you're not you're going to be able to connect this to a uh, to a, uh, a laptop no problem at all you're just going to use some different cabling that all you've got on these old DG 700s and these are every DG 700 ever made was came with a, a serial port and what you're going to do your connection options are going to look like um, you got a couple of ways of going the uh, the traditional approach is to use Two cables. What you're gonna what you're gonna have, and we sell all these cables. Um, you're gonna use a serial cable, and that's the uh, that's the uh, kind of the tan um, cable. Um, it's a, a DB9 RS232 cable. Uh, but then you need an adapter because you've got to get it into the to the to your computer. In the good old days, we were able to with our Pentium One computers and our one gig hard drives. We were able to connect that. Uh, those computers actually came with serial ports built in, but with subsequent versions of um, of Windows, we uh, they pretty much eliminated serial ports. There's some guys still have some serial ports out there. That's a uh, you could build a computer that had a serial port built in, but um, people think they have serial ports, but it's usually a VGA monitor output. It's not a serial cable. What you're looking for is a nine. It's a nine pin. And most computers do not have that, but we get we get we get past that with these adapters, and that adapter, that USB to RS two thirty two, that is that's the key, and really day in and day out, what we found is that a certain brand works. This the brand that 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 we sell in stock is Serial Gear. And you don't have to buy it from us. We sell it, but you can buy the Serial Gear slash Cool Gear brand out on the web, um, and that that will work for you. But I'll tell you, when they when guys go out and um, and go to a an electronics store, you can buy uh, adapters that'll have a USB on one end, and uh, it'll be a straight cable. We never know. I can never guarantee that those will work. Um, the kind of the off brands and the bargain basement variety typically don't come with a driver disc that works, and we kind of fight those. Um, but if you buy the the Cool Gear brand that I know has a driver that comes with it, we can pretty much guarantee, even though we might fight it a little bit, that we can get you hooked up and, and running. Um, so that's what that that uh, connection looks like. Again, this is a, a, a shot of the Cool Gear, and uh, again, the key is that that Cool Gear Zero Gear brand will come with a mini uh, a mini disc that you can that you can run. If you've got a uh, you know a newer higher end um, you know like a uh, like a Surface Pro or some other um, Windows um, or Windows um, Windows 8 uh, Pro. Uh, device that um, that doesn't have a, a disk, um, you can you can get the contents over on a on a flash drive. You can flash drive it in. There's a couple of tricks that you, we could use to get that in there. You could uh, if you if you're having trouble with any of this, give us a call. We'll get you through it. Okay, but um, again, I hate to keep harping on it, but the brand really seems to matter. And we've got it, or you can buy it online. Um, but you've got to run that driver again prior to making your connections. 
The other option um, that I found gives you a lot of flexibility is um, using the, um, the adapter and then some special trick adapters that we've come up with um, with um, Cat5 cable. Um, the other uh, scenario, really you were kind of limited in terms of the distance that you had to keep between your laptop and your DG700 attached to your uh, to your door frame, you know you were limited to about yeah, maybe maybe eight feet I think of the of the serial cable. So no matter what, you were, were always kind of scrambling to find a, a chair or a, a stand of some type so that I could uh, put my laptop fairly close. This new option, um, you can uh, basically depending. I mean, this this is showing about a 20 foot USB cable. So I could set uh, I could set my laptop on uh, on the dining room table, and um, and and run the cord all the way to the DG700 attached to the gauge hanger bar right on the frame, and I can run my test that way. Um, kind of a big picture type thing is um, this arrangement is actually what's used in commercial testing, where you're hardwiring from um, you know let's say you've got uh, a building with two banks of three fans one on the east side one on the west side you'd set your computer station up in the middle of the building and you've got to run a thousand feet of cat5 cable from um, uh, from the from the uh, from the doors with the fans set up to your computer station this arrangement works quite slick um, but what you're going to need is uh, I'm sorry I'm getting ahead um, let, let's show you some of the uh, again this is a, a this is the cat this is the um, uh, the connection that's, that's that we're using with the um, with techlog 3 multi-fan testing and what you're going to need are those little black adapters in the lower left hand corner you're not going to find those um, uh, at, out at an electronics store. That's a, a, a DB9 to Cat5 adapter. We pin those out here. A pair of those is five dollars, um, and you could connect this a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, um, we're, we're showing right here is um, this is the commercial testing where I've got uh, I want to bring in multi, multiple multiple DG700s. So I've got um, I've got a, a, a hub that's a USB a serial to USB hub um, that we sell but there's there's a bunch of brands that are out there but that will connect you're gonna go to your DG 700 and you're gonna put um, uh, you're gonna you're gonna go with the uh, the mail connectors into the top of your DG and then you're gonna take your Cat5 cable and you'll run one end into the DG and run the other end all the way back to your computer station and you'll have the other adapter on that side. And here's kind of what it looks with a short run. So here we're using, and this is a little bit different, this is a commercial setup where we're taking two DG700s. I've got four pressure channels and I'm using actually a, a splitter so that I really only need to run one long Cat5 cable all the way back to home base. So if, if you can see it, I've got two DG700s um, and I've got those um, individually going into a splitter. So then I've got a short splitter cable and then a, an adapter. I could run 4,000 feet of Cat5 cable back to home base and then I've got to resplit them. So then I want to um, I want to use another splitter, and then I've split the um, those two gauges so that each individual gauge is going to take up a, a serial port on the um, on the adapter, and then uh, on the, the hub, and then I've just got a, a, a USB cable going from the hub to the laptop. Uh, and this is really showing what it looks like. This is a three fan setup. Um, uh, DG700 on the left side, left side gauge. Channel A is going to measure envelope pressure with reference to the outside. Channel B is going to measure fan flow from fan one or my bottom fan. Uh, the right side gauge uh, we're going to dedicate to um, to channel A is going to measure fan flow. Uh, channel B is going to measure fan flow from the top fan. I'm sorry, channel A is uh, middle fan. Channel B is flow from um, from the top fan. And really, for a three fan setup, that's the bare minimum. Uh, I'd need two DG 700s. That eats all of your um, that eats up all of your um, all of your your pressure channels. And again, you could run that with a Cat5 splitter cape cable uh, kit that we sell, you could run all of that back to a central location with one Cat5 cable. That's a pretty slick setup. And again, that's what it looks like coming back in, where we again we've used the, uh, the Cat5 adapters coming back in to a, um, a, a USB hub, an 8-port USB hub 
with a, a single USB cable going back into your, uh, into your uh, laptop computer. Um, one of the more exciting developments that we've got, those are, those are your basic setups for, uh, for your DG700. Um, what we've got that we've, um, that we've put together um, that will be available in June is what we call the TEC Wi-Fi Link. This is a, a, a wireless adapter available June 2013, $275. Um, what this does is this essentially cuts the cord. This adapter uh, will work with any vintage DG700. Doesn't have to be a, a USB uh, com uh, compatible DG700. It'll work with any DG700 that we've ever made. And it, it will cut the cord. It's powered by your DG700. One of the uh, caveats that we're giving is that this, um, this, this device pulls some power. And when normally um, a DG700 will run about 100 hours on a fresh set of batteries, a continuous operation. If you were to put uh, connect that Wi-Fi uh, wi adapter uh, and ran it nonstop, your runtime would be down to 10 hours. So um, it does have different. Uh, uh, it will it will take some some juice and 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 um, you're going to want to go with a high end rechargeable battery. We're seeing some uh, some really nice quality rechargeable batteries out there. Uh, 23 to 2400 uh, milliamp hours. Um, um, and you'll want to have um, uh, you know a good backup set and um, and and even a, a, a backup set possibly of um, old school high-end alkalines but um, this this device is really going to be a game changer the device will work with um, new versions of of, of Tektite uh, in June we will release uh, a version of Tektite um, that will work with this this device there will be um, a version of TechLog3. Uh, the new version TechLog3 will communicate with, with this device. Uh, again, it screws into the top of your DG700. And, um, and in June, we will also have a, uh, uh, an app. Uh, right now, it's just going to be an Apple app. But at some point, there will be an Android version of this. And this is, this is different from the app that we've got out there right now. Right now, some people are familiar with our um, iTech ResNet app. That's a manual data entry app. Um, that, that, that is, that's a whole different animal. Um, but we will have a new app called iTech 700 that will communicate with the Wi-Fi adapter. And this is what it's going to look like. And this will work on, this is what it'll look like on an iPhone or an iPad and at some point again an Android version but you're gonna you'll be able to display um, channel A and channel B uh, building pressure with reference to the outside and flow or you could configure it to just uh, measure pressures um, some of the uh, um, uh, here it is again uh, with channel A um, with a pressure reading uh, you'll be able to do a, a baseline feature Channel B, you'll have your mode setting. Uh, channel B will give a uh, readout if you've got it in flow or pressure flow at 50. Uh, you'll have your device and you'll be able to use um, either a, a Model 3 blower door or a duct blaster fan. Uh, ring B will uh, be your device and configuration settings. You'll have, you'll be able to cruise. Uh, you'll have, you'll be able to control your, your fan. Um, and, um, and then you've got your, um, your connection options. Um, but that is uh, really um, one of the more exciting things that we've got. I think some of the applications um, that people are going to see out there with this uh, software is that you will be able to um, use it as essentially a, um, I don't know if I'd call it a, a, virtual, a virtual device um, in that um, you could, let's say you were doing, um, you could use it to do a, um, to really do a CAS test that you could have your gauge set up, um, your DG700 set up on, on uh, the front door of the building. Or, I'm sorry, uh, for a CAS test, uh, you could have it set up, um, uh, you, could, you could still do it that way because you could run a hose down to the CAS, but you could bring, the, you could bring the, your DG down to your CAS and then um, you'd be measuring your CAS with reference to the outside 
and then you could go through the building and you could see the effect of the uh, the pressure changes on the on the CAS. You could um, you could do um, fan on, fan off, see how fans uh, affect the pressure in the CAS. Uh, you could do air handler effect on the CAS. What happens when I close a door to a to a story and a half? Um, but you could you could actually see the pressure changes um, um, uh, the the pressure change in the CAS uh, as you walk through the building. So I'm sure you guys are going to find uh, all kinds of uses for the um, some of these new um, this new software and these uh, this new Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, it should be fun. I think we're all looking forward to getting this thing out in the field and and playing with it. Um, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, if you have any questions working with this stuff, uh, feel free to give us a shout at the, uh, the Energy Conservatory. Thanks again. Bye.